After accepting a prestigious job offer, author and preacher Joseph Priestley moved to Calne, a town in southwest England on the River Marden, which was both an important market town and a centre of the woollen cloth industry. Near the town centre there is a circular mosaic, the centre of which contains a bronze memorial relief to Priestley, who discovered oxygen while he was living there. A short walk up the hill from the mosaic brings you to the green, where Priestley used to live, but this is not where he made his discovery. He made the discovery at nearby Bowood House, where he was employed as a librarian and a tutor by Lord Shelburne. Thus, Priestley would walk there, and a footpath from Wendhill Lane, near his home, which now takes you on a much longer and more indirect route, still brings you out near to Bowood House. Here, Priestley had his own laboratory and would carry out experiments which often involved heating substances, because at the time it was known that this could result in the release or absorption of specific gases. As examples, in the 1750s, Joseph Black heated alkaline substances, now known as carbonates, and named the carbon dioxide gas given off as fixed air. Two decades later, Priestley would heat the acid known as spirit of salt and named the released hydrogen chloride gas as fumes of spirit of salt. So when Priestley obtained a sample of a substance, now known as mercuric oxide, it was natural for him to heat it using the equipment of the day. And this included his newly purchased burning lens and glassware to collect gases underneath water. Thus, he isolated a new gas and was amazed by the way it supported combustion. But interestingly, he attributed his success more to chance than to design, which he believed was a major factor in most discoveries. However, while Priestley was the first to publish the isolation of oxygen, it later transpired that at a similar time, Carl Wilhelm Scheel, a chemist who worked as an apothecary at Uppsala, Sweden, had discovered other ways of preparing it, including dry distillation of mineral potassium nitrate. Scheel called the new gas fire air, but he chose to compile all his results into a book which wasn't published until 1777. By this time, however, Antoine Lavoisier, who would later name the new gas oxygen, had suggested that it has a chemical significance that Priestley had not understood. Priestley subscribed to an earlier theory that phlogiston was released to the atmosphere when substances were burned. As substances burnt so well in the new gas, Priestley thought it was pure air without phlogiston, and therefore called it dephlogisticated air. In time, Priestley's continued writings on this, and much more so on political and religious issues of the day, would gain him notoriety, the unfortunate consequences of which are a topic for another day. Thank you so much for watching to the very end, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.